y'all, it's Gabby V from Unlock Success and today I want to talk to you about boundaries. Specifically, I want to talk to you about how boundaries can help you create more productive life, how boundaries can help you get one step closer to be a high performer. Now, specifically, I really want to talk today about people pleasers, or as I like to call them, the peacekeepers. So if we just look at kind of the definition of people pleasers or um, peacekeepers, um, we see those people feel they have no other choice. They feel they have no other choice rather than mold their life, mold themselves around expectations of others, mold everything what they do around other people's lives, which really limits them in their beliefs. It limits them what they think, how they think, what they feel. And overall, at the end of the day, it really expands them to tolerate nearly everything. And that's not always the best thing. Um, you need to look after yourself first before you really look after everybody else. So being a people pleaser or not having a great boundaries can really hurt you in, uh, in the space of productivity. It can hurt you in a space of well-being. It can hurt you in a space of time management. It can hurt you in many different ways, but at the end of the day, it's you who is hurting in this process. So what is really important when it comes to setting up boundaries or having a good boundaries is that you are starting to respect yourself first. You are looking after yourself, your health, your well-being, your productivity first before you move to help anybody else. So there are a few things that you can do to move away and um, set good boundaries. Or if you have a boundaries already, maybe set more and really get away from that people pleasing state. Now, people pleaser is such a harsh word. I kind of find it it's it could be quite harsh sometimes. So I also kind of um, always talk to my clients that maybe you feel that you are the yes person who always says yes to everything and who always is trying to just help everyone. And that would kind of fall into this bracket also. So let's kind of have a look what you can do and how you can set those boundaries um, maybe improve the boundaries that you already have or set new ones so you can move away to more of a you space, space where you respect yourself first, where you put your goals, your dreams first, where you put your well-being first in front of anybody else's. So let's start with number one, which is one of my favorites, and that is self-awareness. Now, I speak a lot about emotional intelligence and how important emotional intelligence is. Self-awareness, it's part of an emotional intelligence framework from um, Daniel Goleman. But why I wanna talk about emotional intelligence and especially self-awareness, is that when you build a strong self-awareness, and that is the first step that you need to start off, is that you are going to, in this process, learn more about you. You are going to learn what you're good at, what you're bad at, where your opportunities are. You're gonna learn how to listen to yourself more, how to mind yourself first, how to uh, look after your well-being first. So people who are really high on emotional intelligence, especially when it comes to self-awareness, they really look for feedback from other people. They want to maximize their opportunity to create more strengths, focus or development. So if you want to um, 
build more of a self-awareness for yourself, these things um, is what you can do. Ask for feedback. Get um, get your team members to give you feedback. Get your friends to give you feedback. Look for things that are triggering you. This is a really good one. So if you feel like there might be things that they're triggering you, write, in, write them down and try to avoid them in the next time. So you are more aware what is actually going on inside your head and in your life. So once you find out more about yourself, what you want, where do you want to go, how you should look after yourself and your well-being and yourself, then you start creating those boundaries. Because you know more about yourself, you'll be able to start putting down these boundaries on a piece of paper as a concrete thing. This is where my boundaries, this is the line that I do not want to cross. So once you do this, once you put the lines down, you then need to move to a step two that is express yourself. Go and express these boundaries. I have so many clients um, that have amazing set boundaries, but they don't use them. They know what they want, they know exactly where they want to go, how they want to get there. And at the end of the day, if anybody comes to them and asks them for a favor or um, asks them to do something outside their job spec, outside their comfort zone, they just say yes, because they feel they have to. They feel that they do not want to disappoint the other person. So one thing when it comes to expressing your your boundaries, one thing um, that is really important to remember is that uh, you are not responsible for other people's feelings. You are only responsible for your own feelings. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and yell and be rude to other people. If you are saying your boundaries with respect and gratitude and you being honest with what's going on inside your heart, inside your head, people will understand. And yes, there might be people who don't understand. There might be people who are pissed off that you don't want to do it. But the anger or the emotions that the, the, the other person is going through, it's not your responsibility. And that brings me to step number three, empty. Empty is really important. But as from emotional intelligence, when we talk about social awareness, we talk about empathy, how we um, can read other people's feelings. And, you know, it's really important to be empathic. But you need to understand that if you are always trying to be empathic and make the other person feel good is that making you feel bad are you rather sacrifice your happiness among somebody else's happiness so really think about it are you rather going to make somebody else's happy and then you are sad or are you going to make sure you are happy and let them to figure out maybe to find another person, maybe to find another alternative to the problem that they have. So being empathic is really important, but you need to have boundaries also when it comes to being empathic. That brings me to a step number four, keeping harmony. Now, a lot of us, and I'm guilty of that myself, a lot of us have developed this um, way of always trying to keep everyone happy. And especially when it comes among families, sometimes even in a teams, it can feel this is the easiest way how to deal with whatever it's going on. Trying to keep everyone happy and trying to keep that harmony among the family or among the team can seem like a great idea at that particular moment. 
but a lot of us know that over time it will start spilling out like a soup that is boiling for hours and it will be a mayhem at the end of the day. So it might be a quick fix to try to keep everybody happy and everybody in harmony, but realistically, not everybody is gonna like each other. Not everyone will have the same opinions. Not everyone will have the same opportunities in life. So it is really important to remember that harmony is great, but not for all causes. Another thing when it comes to harmony is that so many people are trying to keep harmony when it comes to people they surround them. So they want everybody to like me. Let's make um, peace with everyone. Let's pretend around everyone that I am the person who they want me to be so we can keep the harmony around these relationships. So when it comes to this, all I want to say, guys, you attract people, they are like you. You attract people who have the same values, who have the same beliefs, and you really don't need to push yourself so hard to to keep the people who have totally different values and beliefs in your life beside you. You don't really need those people. I mean, you can definitely have those people around, but don't try force it. So you are then pushing away your boundaries, your beliefs, your values. You are pushing them away just to stay in that line of other people's values and boundaries. You don't have to do that. Stick with the people that are really easy for you, that have the same values and the same beliefs. So you don't necessarily have to push so hard and push your boundaries totally away. Now, last but not least, this is definitely one of my favorite steps. Step number five, it's to say no. Once you do build your boundaries, once you are able to express them, when you are able to put down the line of the empathy and you are not trying to uh, keep this harmony in all causes, you then need to learn how to say no to things that don't bring you value. So there and hands up, hands up everyone, if you've ever did something that you felt like you are forced to do so or you felt that this does not bring me any value but I want to keep peace, I want to keep maybe this contact or I want to keep uh, this relationship going so I'm going to do this but this does not bring me any value. Now I would love to know how did you felt after you did that thing? Did you felt fulfilled that you did something great, that you are inspired by what you did? Or did you just felt like, well, that was a waste of time? If you felt like that was a waste of time, you now know you should have said no before. So saying no is really, really important to maintain your productivity and maintain your performance. So if you are getting asked to do something that you know it's not going to bring you any value, just say no. And if you wonder that if you need to have an excuse to say no, the answer is also no. You don't have to have an excuse to say no. You just need to be polite, you need to um, be honest and then if the person is unhappy with you saying no, again, circle back to number two, you are not responsible for feelings of other people. I really hope today's uh, IGTV helped you guys and see you next time on more productivity hacks.